Hey there, everybody. It's your man, Joe Mahawk2694. And Django Fed 23 And we are here with the Ruby Report. Follow up. So as you should know, because you should be watching us, because we are awesome and good at what we do, Natsuji <laughs> Goku did a in-depth analysis, a Ruby Report, of the first episode of Volume 4. Me and Django are now here to both advocate that you go watch that if you want a recap of the episode in his specific way, and we are here to give what I wanted to do for a long while, a prediction of the future. Which we had intended to do with the live stream, but due to time constraints and taking much longer than we expected, we never got to the prediction part. So yes. And plus it doesn't help that Kirito lost uh, stop watching halfway through volume three. So, based off of what we have seen from the first episode of volume four, we are going to discuss what we think's coming up in the future. So, you first, Django. I'm curious to see what Weiss's father wants with her. And I'm hoping and thinking that she's going to try to sneak out and actually manage to somehow escape. Actually, no, if she was going to do that, she would have done that by now. She wouldn't still be stuck at Atlas. Well, Weiss being trapped like that. First of all, we don't even know if she's trapped. We don't even... Oh, I'm like, sure she her, she... her father has got Atlas guards always. Well, I'm just saying, we don't even know if she wants to get out. May, like, maybe she agreed to go home with Dad. I highly... I'm just, There's the very slim possibility that, like, Ruby's gonna try and break her out. Weiss is gonna smack her and say, Why do you think I want it to be ra- I'm... I'm mostly with you. I believe she wants to get out. She just can't. What comes to my mind is Elizabeth from Bioshock. She's stuck in her tower and she can't. Also, I don't think every... she's so much stuck in a stuck in a tower. I'm well, sure she's got free free reign to wander around the, the grounds, but I I know I get what you mean with the symbolism. Kind of. Also, everything in her like she's surrounded by blue. I thought she would have been like she's in a blue. Da ba dee da ba di. God damn, I hate myself for that. <laughs> Stupid camera. Um, one thing that I was thinking at the beginning of the episode, the the new look of the Grimm, and we've already partially seen that from the character trailer. You know, the gorilla Grimm. I was but still really unsettling watching them form out of. That reminded me of orcs from Lord of the Rings, like being birthed out of. Hey, doom. Anyway, okay. So, a couple of things that I'm predicting based off of what we saw at the beginning of the episode with that whole little bad thing. First off, I wanted to see Heath Ledger post like, I know why you're afraid to show your faces in broad day. The Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> that rest is in a... Peace, Ledger. Yes, rest in peace, Ledger. First off, it's obvious at least Dr. Watts doesn't like Cinder. Like, so I foresee... Either he is going to try and kill and leading to Salem killing him in retaliation, or he's going to succeed in killing him, and then Salem will kill him out of But I foresee an attempt being made on Cinder by Dr. Watts somewhere. Shit. I also foresee him going absolutely batshit insane as well, because if- did you notice that his voice sounded an awful lot- No, but I see the mustache resemblance. I th his voice did sound a little bit like Wyoming from... I've never seen Wyoming. Um, now, who did Salem say you're going to Mistral to meet our informant? Did she say that to... She said that to... What? So... Yeah, because she was sending Tyrion to keep looking for the spring maiden. She was sending Hazel out to meet the the leader of Tuxin's the... Tuxin's chubby cousin! Yes, Tuxin's chubby cousin! <laughs> <laughs> Tuxin's chubby cousin. He's fighting... He He's the one that gave up Tuxin in the first place. He's like, my cousin must be taught a lesson. He didn't go bowling with me. He must be taught a lesson. <laughs> okay. Oh, um, You gotta send Delta that picture just so, we, so he knows what we're talking about. Um, when she said, go meet our informant in Mistral... My guess is that is Raven, because I am with I am with uh, Riggy on this, our friend Riggy. I am totally on that the only reason Raven saved Yang is because it was her maternal instincts to do so. If it had been anybody else, she would have let Neo impale them. I don't know about that, especially after what Crow told her in Volume 3, that her well, mother told her not to expect that kind. Well, 
if she really was a cold hearted bitch, she wouldn't have done it in the first place. But I'm still uh, thinking, I'm still agreeing with him that she is on Salem's side. But I'm oh, still, I'm still curious what the hell was up with the end of volume two? The whole Yang, we have a lot to talk about because it's obviously before the end of volume three. It's before volume three, obviously, but they talk about it as if it never happened. So what the hell was that? I think it was you that told me they're doing like the first four episodes is like, uh, like kind of what's been going on with Team Ruby as they're separated. I'm really hoping we get some kind of backstory on that bit with re- when it gets to Yang. And if- Speaking of backstory, um, my prediction for fa- there's been a he's got to be he's got to be something important later on. Well, maybe not. I'm just they might that might be a red herring. We don't know. I mean, probably like not. You also said it might be a uh, uh, what was that thing? What sword? Chekhov's gun. It's the same thing Chekhov, as a red herring. Yeah, Chekhov's gun. Oh, that it, was different. Chekhov's gun is the. It was written. It was made by a Russian playwright who said, "If you're in the first act of a play, you put a gun on the mantel place. It must be used in some way by the end of the second act. Otherwise, it shouldn't have been. Right. There should be no such thing as a superfluous. I think that this is either a maiden in disguise." Or some other form of mythical being that is going to become manifest. Maybe like, maybe like another silver eye or something. Now, this is something, speaking of the silver eye thing, here's something that I was, when the hero does something that, like Ruby did with the whole silver eye power out. Well, the only time I've seen it is in the Matrix, in the first Matrix movie, when Neo jumps inside of Agent Smith, and then that imprints some of Neo's soul, basically, onto the Smith pro. I think that Ruby's Silver Eye thing did more than just take out Cinder's eye. I think it imprinted something on her. Don't forget, Cinder also can't speak. Yeah, but I think that's that, like, she's going to be poised to kill somebody. And then, oh, the uh, the other thing I was thinking of was Voldemort and Harry imparting part of his soul on. That's whenever something like that happens, usually part of the person doing the attack gets imprinted on the person on the receiving end of the attack, and that's what I think happened with the Silver Eye thing. Cinder's going to be poised to kill somebody, and then Ruby is going to hold. I don't know. I think that might be a better. It's a prediction, man. Soul prediction. So prediction can be. A- anyway, I don't think we're gonna find out what Jean's uh, semblance is yet. I think they're gonna keep that even more of a secret than what Velvet's weapon did was. At least until the end of Volume Four, I think. And contrary, they'll probably, they'll, they'll, they'll they'll reveal it when when it's like an absolute. And contrary to popular belief, that woman, that big guy in the intro was obviously Blake's dad. The one that pushed Sun aside. But then that woman that popped up, I don't think that's actually Blake's mother. I think that that is Blake's... Because this show has an aversion to mothers. We don't know who Weiss's mom is. Both of Ruby and Yang's moms are dead. And... Yang's mother isn't dead. Well, Ruby's mother is dead. Yang's mom is a friggin' aloof... And I'm believing that the ice cream cone gremlin is going to come... Right when our heroes think that they're making some progress, Neo's gonna come down and be like, Remember me, bitch! Or something like that. She's gonna offer them some Neo's Neo. <laughs> and tell them it's... But, like I said before, my original prediction for Volume 4 was that it was gonna kick ass. And so far, even though it's only been one episode, it has been. Oh, and for those of you who are saying that Jean using Pyrrha's armor in his weapons is selfish, piss. Remember what she said when she unlocked his armor? By thy shoulder, aura. I protect. Or, yeah, when she really when she unlocked his aura, by thy shoulder, I protect. She was by his side before. Now she's on. He, she's still. That's what they're going. So for those of you saying now she's literally just an accessory to Jean, or now she's you know that's really disrespectful to her. No. Way. Anything you want to add, Django? Um. You forgot to mention that uh, Salem changed her mind and sent Tyrion after Ruby and to bring her back to her, bring Ruby back to Salem alive. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that 
I already don't like him. He creeps me out. I can't stand people with a murder. So you don't like Ryan? There's a difference between the Mad King and Tyrion the Psycho Bastard. <laughs> Salem reminds me kind of of the new Rita Rep- Oh, and do you think Oz is actually dead? Like I've said before, I don't know what to believe. Anime. To- and thank you, Natsu, for saying that people to people who th- don't call Ruby not an anime. Thank you for saying what you did, because Ruby is absolutely an anime. Rooster Teeth has defined it as an anime. It shows up in the anime section at FYE and other stores. It's an anime. Simple as that. Well, alright, that about wraps it up. Problem is, I didn't... Well, do your own video. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. We've got a whole new volume of Ruby ahead of us. The four girls are split up, and... Oh, right, that's the one other... No, wait, that's one other thing I wanted to talk about. I saw this amazing comic today. I mean, it was freaking incredible. Okay, it showed Yang and Ruby meeting up, and Yang's like, come home, sis. And Ruby's like, it was really nice to meet you, or see you again, Yang, but I can't leave yet. And Yang's like, are you stupid? This isn't your fight. And Ruby's like, yes, it is. It's yours, too. It's all of Team Ruby's fight. Ruby, you idiot! You know that's not true, Yang. Look! And she cocks her one remaining Embrasilia. This is what I'm I'm trying to protect you as your big sister. I'm taking you home even if I'm dragging you there. And then Ruby's like, I don't want to fight you. And Yang's like, neither do I. Ruby's like, fine. Ching! Pulls out Crescent Rose. But if I win, you're coming with me. Deal. I want that to happen! I'd love to see that, and here's the thing. Ruby would easily kick Yang's ass because Yang's been doing nothing but sitting on said ass. (laughs) Oh, God. Okay, we're ending it there. This has been Jomahawk 2694. (laughs) Jankofet 23. (sighs) Stay away from the pumpkin peats. Yeah. It doesn't toughen your tummy, but it toughens something else. It'll toughen... Yeah. (laughs)